Okay, let me start with fuel system status. You want to be in closed loop and that means that your ECU is actually taking data from your sensors to determine air and fuel mixture. When you are checking this data, you often see bank 1 and bank 2. Bank 1 is for engine head number 1 and bank 2 is for engine head number 2. This is Fiat Punto, simple four cylinder engine, so I have only one head and that means I have only bank 1. If you have like E6 V8 engine, most of this data you would see two times one for bank 1 and second for bank 2. Calculated engine load, how much work your engine is doing. Let me step on the gas pedal. Engine coolant temperature, ECT, temperature of your coolant. Short term fuel trim and long term fuel trim. One of the most important live data you will see. There are basically the fuel amount correction. So if it says 5%, that means your engine is adding extra 5% of fuel. And on the other hand, if you see like minus 10%, that means your engine is reducing the fuel amount by 10%. Generally for the short term fuel trim you want to see from minus 10 to plus 10%. If you see more you have some kind of issue. Okay, a long term fuel trim is basically the same, but how they work together is, for example, you can get vacuum leak, your short term fuel trim will jump to 20% and when the long term fuel trim sees that you need 20% of fuel to achieve stoichiometric ratio, it then would increase to 20% which would set new baseline of fuel amount to 120% and short term would then drop to 0%. So to determine your absolute fuel trim, you can just put them together. The short term is jumping around. So let's say 10% plus minus 4.7. So my absolute fuel trim is around 6%, which is not that bad. So what to do if you have high fuel trim? Let's say 20%. That is most likely caused by vacuum leak. These are the fuel trims. Now let's go create a vacuum leak. So I created vacuum leak and you can see that my short term fuel trim is jumping at higher percentage. How you can confirm it is caused by vacuum leak is just step on the gas pedal. And if it starts to drop with gas pedal on, that means you have vacuum leak. Okay, just quick example. Let me just completely make up this matrix, but you are idling at 1000 RPM and you have 10 grams of air coming in. And you also have vacuum leak, which brings in 3 grams of air. So you have 13 grams of air, but your ECU only knows about 10 grams. So vacuum leak is causing 30% of extra air. So you can see your fuel trim be at 20-30% to compensate for that air. But when you press on the gas pedal and you are in 5000 RPM, now you can have 50 grams of air coming in. And those 3 grams of air doesn't do much, so your fuel trim would be at zero. What else do we have here? Intake manifold absolute pressure, that is your MAP sensor, measuring pressure in your intake manifold. If I press on the gas pedal, it should go up. Engine RPM, you already know that speed of your engine in rotations per minute. Vehicle speed, also very self-explanatory. Okay, now we have ignition timing advance. So your spark plugs will usually fire before your piston reaches the top of your cylinder and your pistons are connected to crankshaft which is rotating. When you see 10 degrees of timing advance, that means that your crankshaft needs 10 more degrees of rotation for piston to reach the top of cylinder. If you would see zero, that means that spark plug is firing when the piston reaches the top. And if you see negative value, you probably shouldn't see that because that would be timing retardation, not advance. And that would mean your spark plug is firing late when the piston is already going down. Let me try to step on the gas pedal. even 47. Toyota is displaying timing advance. I saw 42 degrees. So apparently 40 degrees is also okay. I guess if you see like even 40% if it is positive value it is okay. Next we have intake air temperature. So temperature of air that is being sucked in your engine. Absolute throttle position. Okay when you step on your gas pedal it will open your throttle to let more air in your engine. If I step on it we should see something close to 100. 
-hmm. And now oxygen sensor data. If you have catalytic converter in your gasoline car, you will also have at least two oxygen sensor, upstream oxygen sensor, which is bank one, sensor one, before catalytic converter, and then you have downstream oxygen sensor after catalytic converter, bank one, sensor two. Okay, as I said in the beginning, if you have V8, V6 or other V-shaped engine, you will have four oxygen sensors at least. So bank one, sensor one, sensor two and bank two, sensor one, sensor two. If you are in older car, you probably have classic oxygen sensor and you should see it switching from lean to rich condition. That is to ensure that your catalytic converter will work efficiently. We should see it going up and down. This is how healthy oxygen sensor data looks like. But remember that you want to see this behavior only for your upstream sensor, sensor one. We can also add the sensor number two. Okay, so oxygen sensor one, oxygen sensor two. Okay, sensor one is red, sensor two is green. Okay, you want to see your sensor one should be constantly switching up and down from rich to lean. And your sensor two, you want to see it at one value and don't change too much. If you see your oxygen sensor 2 data going up and down, exactly the same like your oxygen sensor 1, that means your catalytic converter is damaged and doesn't work. There is actually good demonstration in my book. See, the front oxygen sensor should be oscillating from 0.1 to 0.9 volts, but your second sensor, see, if it's stable like this, catalytic converter is okay. Now it starts oscillating, it is going bad. Here I guess it is looking fine. Sensor 1 is switching, sensor 2 is stable. So I am assuming my catalytic converter works okay. Newer vehicle doesn't use oxygen sensors anymore. They have air to fuel ratio sensors. Air to fuel sensors doesn't oscillate like oxygen sensors. And this Toyota middle value is around 3.3 volts. Low voltage means rich condition and high voltage means lean condition. We have oxygen sensor current. If you see oxygen sensor current, I think you can be sure that you have air to fuel sensor and not oxygen sensor. Negative value is indicating rich condition and positive value is lean. Step on the pedal, it should go negative. Let go pedal, positive and return to zero. You can also see fuel trims for your oxygen sensors. If you have something wrong with your short term and long term fuel trim, which we already saw, then your ECU is taking the data from your oxygen sensors fuel trim. So it is something like backup fuel trim. Then you have OBD requirements. EOBD is from Europe cars, JOBD for Japanese vehicle, and all others I think are just OBD. Distance traveled while MIL is activated. MIL stands for your check engine light or malfunction indicator lamp. That can be helpful when you are checking used vehicle. You know, when you see the check engine is on for 20,000 miles, it is probably better to not buy that car. We didn't have that on Punto. Mass airflow sensor measuring amount of air going in your engine. If your car doesn't have it, like Punto, this value is actually calculated from your MAP sensor. We also have this equivalence ratio or lambda value, air to fuel mixture. If you have one precisely, that would mean stoichiometric ratio of 14.7 units of air mixed with one unit of fuel. At least on this Toyota, when you see 1.2, that is lean condition, and when you see something around 0.8, that is rich condition. High value means lean, and low value means rich. Let me show you, I will step on the pedal, and when I let go, it drops back to 1.2. Commanded evaporative purge. I guess that is for evap solenoid, which is controlling flow of your gasoline vapors in your evap system. Number of warm ups since DTC is cleared. So, how many times I start the engine since I last time cleared the codes? Good feature for buying used vehicle. Distance traveled since DTC is cleared. Again, helpful when buying used car. You can see when was the last engine issue. Barometric pressure, this is just the outside pressure. Next we have catalyst temperature, so temperature of your catalytic converter measured before your catalytic converter and after catalytic converter. Okay, so for newer vehicle there is more data. You even have data about engine torque. 
EGR valve. I guess that this 0% is EGR closed and maybe 100% would mean EGR open, I'm not sure. You have the particulate filter, you can even see engine exhaust flow rate. If you want to learn more, use the link in the description. Just go check it out and decide if it's something you want to buy. If not, that's completely fine. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in the next one.